Hi everyone. Inkscape has three key elements. They're called objects, paths, and strokes. Understanding the differences between these elements is key to properly using the various commands in Inkscape. And in this video, we'll focus on understanding the differences. And in the future video, we're going to um, discuss in detail about how to use these various objects that are listed here. So this ellipses object is a, a very good example to introduce what an Inkscape object is. Um, you can find that circle shape over there. That's an ellipse. And if you click on that, and this is a selected. And the next thing you have to do is to choose your fill color. And we're going to draw an ellipse in here in the center part. Um, I will choose a lighter color like this in a gray color, somewhere in a 40% of gray down there. If I choose that, the fill color is selected. And I will choose stroke color, the boundary. Let me go ahead and choose a red one. To choose a stroke color, you have to hold the shift key and select uh, one of the color. So if I click on that, now fill color and stroke color is selected. Now you can just place it anywhere. And just drag it like this and uh, you, you created an ellipse it's not actually a perfect circle and make sure it is uh, this circle is selected sometimes you accidentally click on something else while you're doing that so if it's not selected and if you want to go back to the editing mode you have to click on that object and go to the left panel there and click on that ellipse object again. Then you're back to the shape where you find these three nodes and the indication of the center. Let me go ahead and magnify in there so that you can see a little bit bigger. So there's X mark that indicates the center of this object, and there are three nodes. By clicking on these uh, square shape nodes, and you can change the shape to a more obvious looking ellipse, by choosing this one, you change, change the ratio of ellipse horizontally. This circular shape node is an interesting part. This is actually two nodes that overlap to each other. So if you click on that one, move it to that side, it reveals what that node is doing. And there, the one is there, and you can change that to the other direction. Then it generates a circular sector. So let me make it more like a circular sector like that by um, changing the ratio. Then once you change this um, to something with these circular nodes, you can see there's this thing showing up. There are different options. Right now is in the sector option, but if you choose a second option there, it kind of closes up and give you a different type of shape. And choosing the third one, you can create this um, closure and if you want to go back to the full ellipse and you can choose just something like this all right so these are the detail part but what i wanted to introduce is that it's object if it's an object it has this standard option so that you can change these shapes kind of remaining still in the shape of an ellipse so that's uh, what an object is if you choose all the other types of objects you will have these nodes and you will see all the interesting options showing up in the top panel in there. So let me introduce an object by changing this thing to um, a path. This is an object, so what you can do with a node is limited, but is convenient. So you don't have to worry about um, keeping this as a nice uh, elliptical shape. So to change that to path and to understand the difference, what we're going to do is go in and choose this button. It's called the selection button. So if you click on that, it's going to change to this kind of selection mode. And now this is an object, and we can change that to path by going to the path menu and uh, select this command object to path. And this is an ellipse object. And by clicking on that, it is going to change this one to path. To see um, what we can do with the path, and you have to choose this nodes button. This is for path. So you don't want to click on this button while you're 
uh, playing with an object this button is mainly for a uh, path now this is a path so if you click on that you will see nodes but you do not see the circular node these are all uh, square shaped nodes and if you click on that one of the nodes and move around um, it's it's free now it is not moving along this typical ellipse shape you can do anything you want and you can change these um, level of a node by in here like that and kind of change this curvature and the direction of this each of the part so i'm going to do something a little crazy and clearly um, make this one um, not looking like a you know elliptical shape so i did something like this i changed it so it's no longer an ellipse and i hope you see the difference between an object and a path once you change the path your nodal freedom is higher so you can do pretty much anything with that node right let me explain about the stroke this whole object is clearly has this boundary and this fill area in this boundary part object a boundary thing alone is called the stroke and I will use some of the buttons here to generate the stroke independently rather directly and you can also generate this type of path not going through the uh, so some of the object but you can generate a path directly using this um, bezier curve uh, button but I'm about to generate stroke so let me go ahead and make it squeeze up here and then to generate a stroke I'm going to also use this bezier curve and uh, click and release in one spot and move this mouse without clicking anything and at the destination and double click and it is going to generate a stroke so I'm going to change that to the selection mode and I'm going to pull up the fill in stroke go to object fill in stroke I'm going to move it a little bit over here and under the fill in stroke you can choose stroke style and I'm going to make this one a lot thicker so for example I'm going to change this like a 20 pixel thickness it'll change the thickness there as you can see is it quite thicker maybe even even more thicker in there for the clarity so this is a one line but the huge thickness but because it's so thick now it looks almost like there is a boundary and it is there's a fill area is in there that's exactly why I use this two example. This path has a boundary and a fill area, but this object, um, this thing, st uh, stroke, doesn't have a fill area. You can't change the um, inside color. This is actually one single stroke. So that's the difference between path and stroke. And often, um, this is an interesting technique that you can change this stroke to path and then um, introduce the fill-in area so this is a stroke and uh, converting stroke to path is also a common technique but the main purpose is to kind of distinguish the path and stroke in here and um, next part is just a fun thing to do with this um, these two things so I'm going to go to object um, actually path and stroke to path this stroke is going to be converted to path before I do that, um, let me show you the node. That was the key part. So I selected it here and go to the nodes. And if you hit that nodes button, you can see there are only two nodes at the beginning and at the end. If you just uh, just look at this node, let me magnify it in there. Magnify it down. If you just look at this node, you don't have an impression that these two nodes is going to enclose an area. So that's the um, thing about the stroke I'm going to keep it magnified like this next thing I'm going to do go to select and change the selection mode go to path and stroke path if I hit that and it's going to change this stroke to a path so this um, gonna let me show you these nodes here if I go ahead and click on this node you can see there are one and two and three and four there are four nodes are introduced and that's um, there is a boundary and there's a fill-in area so I'm going to change that to 
a selection mode and change the boundary color of this one to something different so that we can distinguish it. So um, you can do it down here. I'm going to change it to the red one. So um, let me make sure that stroke um, bound strokes um, width width is not too too much. I'm going to change it to red one. As you can see, um, there was a boundary. And now I color it a different one so you can see clearly and then I can change the inner color to something lighter like that and then change that. Now that was a stroke before and change the path and this is actually turns out to be very interesting technique when you have to sketch, uh, have to generate uh, interesting shape. So that's the differences uh, between objects and path and strokes. But uh, oftentimes we wanted to create more in a subtle and more complicated object. And all those things can be done in the following procedure. You use objects or st a stroke. And um, once you generate a certain object, you convert it to a path. You further manipulate um, using following operations that are available under the path menu. You can see there's a union, difference, intersection exclusion and division, cut path, and these are dynamic offsets. These are very frequently used command. If you have multiple paths, you can cut out. You can take the difference and exclude. Uh, with a combination of these, you can virtually generate any types of uh, things. So um, to do that, we have to convert object and stroke to path and then uh, use those operations to generate more interesting shape. So that concludes this video that's supposed to explain this key elements of Inkscape.